Now imagine you plan your whole build, every little detail, only to discover that not all PCI slots are equal. Some say X16, others say X16 and in brackets X4. Are they PCIe 5.0 or just PCI? This is a PCIe technical resource meant to clarify and educate on PCI slots. Now our journey begins with the CPU, where we have electrical signals that travel via the PCIe bus. Yes, that's right, PCIe bus, X1, whoa, X1000, that's unusual. Yes, remember to like and subscribe. Now the PCIe bus has multiple lanes. Each lane has two signal pairs, receiver and transmitter, capable of transmitting at tremendous speeds. Now these lanes communicate via the interconnect to the chipset and or to the CPU. Now these bits are encoded, each one to its own specification according to PCIe revision, leaving the final data error-free and hopefully 100% accurate. Now check out some of the speeds for each of the PCIe interfaces and check out PCIe 7.0, it's not currently out, 2025 is the release day. Now roughly saying each revision we get a boost in speed mainly due to the enhancements in encoding among other enhancements and check out the throughput per lane whether it's one lane or x16 16 lanes combined together but that still doesn't quite explain which pci slot you need to use well let's do a motherboard overview of the hp z440 workstation Let's check out these PCI slots. PCI slot number one is a PCIe 2.0 X1 electrical. Slot two is PCIe 3.0 and it is a X16 electrical slot. PCIe slot three is a PCIe 2.0 X4. PCIe slot four is a PCIe 3.0 X8. Slot five is PCIe 3.0 and it is a X16 electrical slot. A six is actually a PCIe 32, 33 megahertz, which is a really old form factor of PCI. Now check out some other details. We got a USB 2 header, USB 3 header. We've got all of our SATA ports, which are able to get to around six gigabits per second. So relatively fast. We also have our memory dims of which there are eight on this particular motherboard. There's an internal USB header. And we also have a very nicely laid out fan module right up top which would allow ram fan cooling with a special adapter there's our cmos battery there's our intel chipset c612 and we also have a couple of screws missing wait where'd they go oh that's right case swap one of the joys of the case swap we have quite a few screws located all the way around but not all of them were able to find a home uh, some of them didn't quite make it. We're swapping this into a Fractal Defined 7XL, but more on that in a future video. For now, let's go into more detail on these PCI slots. So check out the mechanical versus electrical size. So mechanical sizing for these is X1, X16, X4, X8, X16, and 32 megahertz, which is a little bit different. But the mechanical size does not equate to electrical size. That's right. Each of these may not have every single pin connected, giving us a limitation in the number of lanes for each of these. So we have to actually carefully match our PCI adapters like one of these. What is this one? Well, this is the J air cooled M.2 adapter that allows you to fit an NVMe to a PCI slot. It requires PCIe 3.0 and ideally X4 electrical connectivity so slot one not optimally suited we're looking for an x4 now slot two is x16 that would work but we have so much lane bandwidth that's going to go unused okay let's try slot three that is the x4 which theoretically could work but i guess that one's occupied at the moment wonder what's in there it looks like a usb adapter maybe usb c that leaves us with slot four as a pretty good candidate yes it's an x8 but we can trade off a little bit of the bandwidth in favor of our NVMe adapter and slot 5 would be not as optimal because we have x16 there's a lot more lanes and it wouldn't even fit into slot 6. Okay so we have a home for that one what about another PCIe adapter well this one's the Aorus Gen 4 NVMe adapter which allows you to fit four NVMe's to a single PCI slot a little bit better than JE which could only allow one NVMe 
Now this particular adapter I actually have in my HP Z840, but where would we fit something like this on the Z440? Well, slot two or slot five are optimal, but that's not enough. We also need to bifurcate the lane. Wait, what is lane bifurcation? Well, check it out. Each of these PCI slots, providing the motherboard is able, will be able to be divided up or split into smaller segments. That's going to allow us to fit these rather impressive NVMe adapters, but critical that we toggle the setting, otherwise the motherboard will not know that there are multiple NVMe's connected to a single X16. And the idea there is, we can take an X16 and split it into four lanes of X4 connectivity. So that's X4, 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 X4. Very, very handy. And that allows us to fit most of these modern devices. But it doesn't stop there. We can take an X8 lane and we can actually split that into two sections of X4 connectivity. So there will be a time and a place when you can do that or need to do that. We can also take an X16 and split it into two separate lanes of X8, XA connectivity. Okay, that's pretty handy, but where do we find these bifurcation settings? Well, the best place will be in the BIOS. Now, this particular BIOS here is for HP Z840, and I'm using HP Performance Advisor, which actually allows you to check your NVMe bifurcation or PCIe bifurcation from within Windows. Really handy. So slot one, we're not expecting to see bifurcation. It is a X1 slot after all, but slot two, there it is, bifurcation. What are the options? Well, X4, 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 and the X8, X8 combination. So very important to toggle this. What would happen if we perhaps didn't toggle the setting? Well, in that case, your slot will be deemed as a single X4, and then you'll only see one of your NVMEs. There are situations sometimes where you might see two NVMEs, but generally you're not going to see all four and they will not work properly. So very important to select bifurcation. You actually see it's active down here, which is where that Gigabyte Aorus Gen 4 NVMe adapter is for me at the moment on my HP Z840. Okay, so that was handy. Definitely check out the software HP Performance Advisor, ideal for your HP workstation, should you have one. I think it only works on them. Now, what if you had an older machine, something like the HP Z420 workstation? This one's been case swapped, as you can tell. Well, let's quickly load up the BIOS and have a look. Surely there'll be bifurcation settings you can throw in your awesome adapter and then you'll be on your way with a massive grin on your face, hopefully. But I have bad news. It doesn't work because these particular motherboards are too old. Even the chipsets would be too old to support bifurcation. So you can find the setting usually under slot settings within your BIOS. But uh, there's no option for bifurcation, so sorry to burst the bubble, but there is absolutely no way to get this to work on the older workstations. Okay, what about an HP Z240, which is kind of just as new as a Z440 or a Z840? Well, let's have a quick look. Ignore the boot errors, the joys of a case swap. Let's see if we can find these settings. So same deal, we go into our BIOS menu. Or BIOS setup, then we're looking for advanced and slot settings. So surely it would be there. This is a fairly new motherboard and it should be supported. Wait, it's not there. Why is it not there? Good question. Not all motherboards support it. And this is where you're going to have to do your own due diligence to make sure the computer that you're planning to use actually has bifurcation as an option within the BIOS. Very important. Once you've confirmed it, which PCIe adapters would you be able to fit in? Well, obviously the graphics card is going to be the most demanding out of the bunch, requiring X16. You could also fit something like a 10 gigabit Ethernet adapter, or maybe you want one of these Gen 4 NVMe adapters. Take note, Gen 4 means PCIe 4.0. That one there is the HP Z Turbo Quad Pro. Very, very capable. You could also fit some USB cards, very handy in your workstation in particular. And you could also fit some expansion cards, whether it's for SAS, SATA, or SCDI, very handy. It's also the Firewire connectivity, and obviously your workstation of this era, very well suited to Thunderbolt 2. Now for the main entree, we have an NVMe adapter. With all this newfound knowledge, let's test if we can correctly install it in our workstation. 
well hopefully we'll be able to pull it off. So this particular one is the Asus Hyper M.2 and we can have a quick look at the adapter. We can see four particular locations for NVMEs and if you look really carefully at the PCB you actually notice we have got the full X16 lanes allocated towards those NVMEs. So we're going to need to bifurcate X4. Now as a bit of contrast this is a single NVMe adapter that allows one NVMe to fit to a PCI lane and that's X4 connectivity no hope of extra NVMe's but that's okay these work well they just run a bit hot. There's another one now you might be tempted to say oh we could fit two NVMe's on that one but no it's still only X4 connectivity which means one of these will connect through SATA and it's a whole different form factor. Usually the B key, particularly the M.2 NGFF M.2s, which we find in older devices. So check it out. X4 connectivity, only one NVMe, no matter what we might have wanted. And there's the next little adapter. Now this one doesn't connect to a PCI slot, but as illustration, really cool. You can fit those NGF drives convert them into SATA and that would actually fit into a hard drive bay which is really handy as well should you want to repurpose some of the older laptop and maybe tablet storage drives very handy now going back to this hyper m.2 drive there's the pcb we can now clearly see where those nvmes were meant to be mounted as well as the m keys off to the far left and obviously we got a nice fan on the right hand side quite a bit of hardware and capacitors off on the left this particular one is well suited but there are some key differences between this one and something like the HP Z Drive Quad Pro which has added capacitors giving you a little bit of power loss protection this particular one doesn't but definitely take note all four NVMEs are connected to that X16 slot giving us the ability to run four NVMEs on a single PCI slot and that fan keeps everything under control along with a little bit of thermally conductive silicone but more on this in a future video we will do an unboxing on this adapter and we'll do some performance testing now what if you ignore everything we have learned and you still decide to fit your nvme adapters to the wrong slots well we can test it out this is the hp z240 which does not support bifurcation we've installed that x16 card into an x16 lane and we've installed a graphics card into an x4 lane wait why'd that boot wait it actually works okay to be fair it will still work but it's generally not advised because you're going to severely bottleneck that particular adapter so something like the rtx 3080 there connected to an x4 electrically not pretty we can do some benching oh that actually came out higher than before it's okay it's a cpu bench that's fully just because of the uh, very nice cpu cooler so you definitely don't consider doing something like that you could absolutely destroy the hardware which is quite risky definitely want to match up to the correct slots keep an eye out for a future video where we check out how to case swap the hpz 440 into the fractal define 7xl hopefully you've enjoyed that content i'm going to get back to racing what appears to be a stormy canyon in a ferrari f40 sensational i'll see you on the next video have a good one